Hi, I'm Passion. Some of you have asked me how I actually prepare for the driven hunts with a rifle. And I think that actually is a valid question to ask because driven hunts with a rifle is something that has intrigued people for many, many years. And a lot of people, they actually never get the chance. But isn't that difficult? I'll try in this short video to give you an idea of what it takes to go on a driven hunt with a rifle. It's autumn. Normally the driven hunts are in the period of October until January in some countries, February depends on the species you're hunting. Normally we are talking about wild boar, fallow deer, red deer, sometimes moose. Uh, it depends on the country you're going in or you're living in. And in this video I will try to give an overhead picture of what you need, what equipment, what preparations do you actually need to actually just go on a driven hunt because it's actually not that difficult. The first thing you have to think about is which kind of animal are you hunting for. There's a huge difference whether you're huge shooting a moose in Scandinavia or a red deer in Hungary, in Poland or in Germany or for that matter a fallow deer. In theory you can use any caliber that is legal for that kind of species you're hunting. But a lot of driven hunts, well, you actually get a huge variety of animals that you have a chance for. Uh, some of the hunts I go on, you have foxes because they are predator and they want to keep the population down, so they are allowed to be shot. You have roe deer, a small, graceful deer uh, that is very, very easy to kill with a 223 or a 243. Uh, and perhaps using a 308 or even bigger is seriously overkill. But then again, on the same hunt, maybe you're allowed to shoot fallow deer, where six six <coughs> sorry about that six point five type fifty five SE is actually suitable, depending on the gun fit. But most people prefer 308 and up when it comes to the bigger deer species. To give you an idea of what we're talking about well first of all you have to think about what rifle are you going to use in theory there are two main categories you have the standard bolt action rifle or you have the break action rifle i know in some countries you're allowed to use pump rifle semi-automatics uh, in the bolt action category you can put the straight puller if you want to to me well I have a thing about the classic, and to be honest, this little one, this is a Sarko A2. Standard bolt action rifle, it's in 308 Winchester, and it's a full stock. I like this one because it's short, it's compact, it handles five rounds in the magazine. I think with a little luck you can actually squeeze in the sixth in the jumper directly. You have a Hinged magazine well, so you will never lose your magazine. Some hunters, they like actually to buy additional magazines for the bolt actions. Um, years ago, I had a TK 695. Uh, I bought extra magazines, so I had a standard three-shot magazine in 30-odd six. And I bought an extra, so I actually had, I think it was six rounds of gold. But was it actually 10? I can't remember. Do you need it? Well, it's up to you. Um, to be honest, most driven hunts, yeah, we have all seen the videos uh, from Wild Boar Fever uh, recorded in Hungary and Romania and Poland, uh, some even in Germany. But the hunts I go on, there's plenty of time to reload the magazine after shooting. This one hasn't got a scope on it. And there's a reason for that. This is mounted with Optilock, Sarko quick release mounts and the reason for it is because I wanted actually a rifle that I could use for anything. So standard stalking, I use this. This is a 2.5 to 10 times 50 and as some of you know I have a thing about Nico Sterling uh, Diamond Series. A lifetime warranty, great quality, illuminated sights. You can vary between green and red depending on what you prefer and you have different 
power rates of the light if you want to. You can easily go on a driven hunt with a standard up to, uh, standard scope like this, sorry. But when I go hunting, I prefer to shoot with my eyes open, both of them at the same time on a driven hunt, because I'm shooting at a moving target most of the time. So with this scope mount, I can easily change the scope from a standard to this. This, also an Eco Sterling Diamond Series, is a, what we call a driven hunt scope. It has an enhancement of 1 to 4 and this times, sorry, 24. So you actually have the, well, depending on the distance you're shooting, uh, you have the capacity of going from non -mag zero magnification up to 4. And when we talk about distance on Dragon Hunts, most of the time we are talking about zero to roughly 100 meters. I think it's 91 yards. But occasionally you will get a chance for a wild boar, red deer, a red stag, that is probably at past the 100 meters mark. So it's a good thing that you can actually increase the magnification so you get a better chance. This setup, I made it recently. Um, I love this short compact rifle. Uh, it's a th just a pleasant thing to shoot. Uh, with this one, the 308, I actually zeroed in with this. This is a Sarko Powerhead Blade. It's um, 9.7 grams as far as I remember. I think it's 139 grams. But to be honest, uh, fast moving wild boar in the forest and Germany, in Eastern Europe, doesn't matter. A wild boar on a drive can easily reach 50, 60 kilometers per hour. And believe me, even a big bull, not a bull, a big boar is actually the hitting area on that is roughly the size. Hitting this area. Well, if the wild boar standing still, that is pretty easy, even at 150, 200 meters distance. But coming in from the side or slightly from the front um, with 45, 55, sometimes 60 kilometers per hour, that is a difficult target to hit. And that is why a lot of hunters going on the driven hunt, they actually prefer to have a little more power. In the caliber they use for the driven hunts. I know hunters that go driven on driven hunts in Eastern Europe with a standard 30 R6 with great success. Some use the 300 Win Magnum, some the 338 Lapua. Well, you have to find a rifle that, first of all, you can handle the caliber, the recoil from the caliber. Second of all, you have to think about can I actually get additional ammunition? Because there is a chance you might run out of ammunition on a big driven hunt in Hungary or in Romania, or for that matter, even in Poland. So think about what you're zeroing your rifle with. What is the chance of getting you ammunition in the country where you're going? Because you will hit, and sometimes you will hit something like a tree or just the ground because animals on the move they move fast as you know i have a thing about break action rifles and this little beauty the sabati bl 92 classic express rifle is to be honest my favorite i only have two shots but this is 30 yard blaster and this is a Blaster CDC. Uh, the reason I mentioned these two types of ammunition is because in Europe there's actually starting to be a ban in most countries when it comes to rifle ammunition that contains lead. So you have to think about that before you go on driven hunt. This one is a 10.4 grams uh, copper alloy. Uh, this is a expanding bullet, just like the Sarko is. This is roughly 160 grams, 
uh, it delivers the energy somewhere between the 30R6 and the 300 Win Magnum. This one is roughly 15-20% uh, bigger in energy and in speed than the standard 30R6 in the same bullet weight. This one with an injector means that I can actually shoot pretty fast, pull it to the shoulder, both eyes open. Again, a scope 1 to 4 times 24. This is possible to actually take off because this is actually a finger detachable scope mount. But to be honest, I just keep it on because it takes no place and I got a small suitcase where I can break it down in the stock and the barrels with the forehand and the scope on. So it's easy to travel with. Uh, probably you noticed that I got these for the sling in all of my rifles and that is because you actually need to carry your rifle along all day. Uh, so having a sling to put it on the shoulder is a good thing. When you are shooting, well, it's easy to shoot at a red stack, a roe deer, uh, if you're uh, in England, a munchak at uh, 100 meters, uh, roughly 91 yards, when the animal is standing still. But actually, if you want to go on a driven hunt and have success by it, I would actually recommend that you start early uh, and you start on the shooting range. Find a shooting range where you have a moving target. Uh, there are a lot of them out there. Um, I don't know what it is like in the States, uh, but here in Europe we have a lot of shooting range where you have moving targets. And most of them you can shoot from distance from roughly 40, 30 meters, I think it is, uh, up to 100. Uh, and you have different kind of silhouettes, uh, wild boar, moose, uh, red stack. Uh, they vary, but it's a good training. Um, over the years, the past, I think, 10, 15 years, there has been here in Denmark something we call shooting cinemas, where you actually go into an indoor shooting arena, where you actually see a film in front of you. That's kind of symbolize the hunt you're on. So you can choose which kind of animal you want to hunt. Um, the latest one I saw was actually that you had the possibility to choose African antelopes. Uh, even, I don't know why, but you can actually try shooting on an elephant. Uh, of course, it's not an elephant. It's a film of it. But it gives you direct, fast indication of where that bullet hits. Because it actually lights up on the screen with, a, I think it's a red dot. And the instructor is there and is perfectly safe in a controlled environment. And you use real ammunition. So you actually get the best training possible. Uh, some people, they want to go on the shooting range. And instead of using their hunting ammunition, they find a full metal jacket because it's cheaper. And I can understand that. But the thing is, a lot of the time full metal jacket bullets are not in the same speed. And they are not have the same energy as the normal hunting ammunition. So you actually have to practice or train, train twice because you can get your ta target practice in with a full metal jacket and that is great practice. But when you've done, take some rounds with the standard hunting ammunition that you're gonna use in your rifle. Also, you have to keep in mind where you're hunting. A lot of the times when we are on driven hunts with a rifle, we are actually placed on a raised platform, a shooting tower. Um, in German it's called the Hochstand or Hochsitz. Uh, platform is a more common uh, name for them in the English speaking part of the world. And normally you're raised three, four, five meters above ground. And there are quite a few benefits with that. Uh, there's a little minus to it. But the benefits are that you are up above the ground, so you shoot downwards. So your bullet, if you don't hit, the projectile will actually just hit ground. So the safety uh, is the best thing. The second of all is that actually you have a full 180, sometimes even 360 degree vision of the area you're in. But the downside is that if the animal is close to you, 
and uh, we are talking 30 meters uh, and lower, uh, closer, not lower. Then you have to actually make some corrections when you're shooting because when you're up high shooting down at a short angle, you actually have to keep in mind that the bullet is actually going under the normal point of impact. So aim high. Uh, per I prefer to just go a bit close to the spine of the animal uh, when I'm shooting at a short distance. Um, I forgot that a few weeks ago on a driven hunt. Um, beautiful day in the forest here in Denmark. And there weren't many red deer, but I was sitting quietly and listening to the birds, enjoying the sun, the blue sky, and a fox came actually just from the forest on my right, ends up a forest road, if we can call it that, and walked away from me. Uh, I was sitting in a three meter tall tower, and when the fox was roughly 35 meters away, something like, I think, 25 yards, I whistled, and it turned broadside, and I was actually using this. Yeah, uh, 30 odd blasts might be a little overkill for a fox, but that was all I had. We were actually uh, on a driven hunt for a red deer. Uh, I found the fox in my scope. I forgot all about that. I turned the magnif magnification down to one, so I didn't have any magnification. And believe me, at roughly 35 meters, a fox in a scope with no magnification is this big. I fired. Uh, I think that fox has the biggest scare in his life because the bullet went over it, sorry, under it, just under the stomach, uh, and it hit the ground and the dust was kicked up from the projectile. The fox was so scared, it sat down and looked quite amazed and ran off into the forest. So yeah, well, I've been hunting for a lot of years, I make mistakes too, and the fox has a story to tell when it comes home to the family. Sorry about that, it was not Walt Disney. Back to the real stuff. Whether you want to carry your ammunition on a driven hunt uh, in a box like they come, or you want to put them in some kind of ammunition pouch, this is for the 308, five rounds, or the more classic way uh, in a belt, this can actually have 12 bullets in it. Uh, this is from the 30 old blaster. Works like a charm. Uh, I found this on the internet. I think it was not even. Oh, do I pay for it? 20 euros, something like that. So they are cheap. You can find them in many other companies and they cost a fortune. Or as many do, they just bring the ammunition in the pocket, uh, in the boxes. Put the box on the rail of the tower, get ready. Another thing you have to consider is when you're going on a driven hunt, you actually have to think about how are the drives actually made. Some drives are roughly half an hour to an hour, but actually in countries like Sweden, some and times in Hungary, sometimes in Poland, even in Germany, a drive with a rifle for some kind of deer, wild boar, can actually last for two and three hours. So when you are going on a driven hunt, if you are invited, ask the person who invites you, what are the requirements? Uh, what do I need to bring? How long is the drive? You know, there is no such thing as stupid question. And believe me, if the person invites you is a serious hunter, there will never be a stupid answer. So it's better to be prepared in advance than come and, let's say, be unequipped. When I go, I always value, I'm sorry, I'm just gonna reach out here. I always bring this. This is a simple fold away seat, seat cover. I actually don't know what it's called in English. Um, you can buy these for what, 10 euros or something like that. And instead of sitting on a wooden bench in a tower, freezing your butt off, this actually helps quite a lot. And it keeps your butt dry. And believe me, in the autumn and in the winter in the forest, it's wet. So always bring one of these in your pocket. It doesn't take much space. Another thing I always bring, and to be honest, it's just a matter of precaution. 
I always bring a vest like this. This is a standard a real tree orange camouflage safety vest. Some driven hunts so on some driven driven hunts actually the beaters, the drive itself carry guns. So it will help them see you if you're wearing an orange vest. The hunt I spoke about earlier, um, well, I missed the fox. Uh, I'm gonna here for that for the next three or four years because I intend that same hunt at the same place every year. We are actually once in a while placed in the forest, but on the ground. And on the same driven hunt, there are actually the the beaters, uh, the dark handles, they're allowed to carry shotguns just if they get the chance for a woodcock or a pheasant. And it's a good thing for them to be able to see me at a distance. So I carry one of these just in case. Because to be honest, I like being out and I like hunting. But I prefer to come back with, well, when I'm breathing. So safety above all. You will experience that most beaters, most dog handlers, they are actually carrying, uh, wearing orange vest or some even orange clothing. And that is simply because you want to see them. Because in the forest, and it's sometimes, well, you should always think before you shoot, but sometimes a reaction time from you see the animal to you have taken the shot is a few milliseconds. So security above all, you never, ever, 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 and I underlined it, never, ever fire a rifle unless you're 100% sure where that bullet will hit. Period. I'm going to sound like my mother, but sorry about that. Also, when you're out hunting, you have to bear in mind that you're sitting in a tower and the weather can be a few weeks ago, 10 degrees, blue skies, sun, autumn in Denmark, beautiful. And you can go on a hunt where you start out in the morning, beautiful weather, and two hours later it's pouring rain and the wind is picking up and the temperature drops from something like 10 degrees Celsius to zero. So find some clothing, whether it's traditional like I like. I like to go in tweed. I simply love tweed. Um, it's made out of wool. It keeps you warm. And I use a three-layer principle. So I actually wear a shirt, a pullover. That is my inner layer. And most of the time I actually wear a shooting vest and a country jacket uh, on top of that. So if it's warm, Take off the country jacket. Just sit in there and pull over in your shooting vest. If it's even warmer than that, take off the shooting vest. And if it starts raining or blowing, or you're going in minus two or three degrees and it's snowing, well, find something that is warm. Uh, I use mainly when it's really winter uh, clothing with some kind of membrane. It can be Gore-Tex, Deatex. C-Tex, God knows how many names and products there are out there, but they will help you keep warm and they'll help you keep dry. But bear in mind that you are sitting still most of the time or standing still and it is pretty cold. On the feet wear rubber boots if you prefer them, but use one with neoprene lining or wear a good short or long boots with some kind of membrane in it or made out of oil, leather or whatever you prefer. But keep in mind that it's going to be cold and it's going to be wet. Or it's going to be warm and sunny. Nobody knows. When it comes to wearing something on your head, you can take on a cap. You can wear whatever you prefer. For many years, I used this one. This is a standard broadshade hat for hunting. Um, in a way, it's a good hat. It takes the rain off uh, my face. Uh, it's made out of wool, so it's more or less waterproof and still warm. But the thing is that when I have it on and I put the rifle up, this, the front, has a tendency of flipping down and hitting the scope and pushing the head up like this. I hate it. So this is just my walk-around hat more nowadays. This I prefer. 
a classic sixpence. It does what it does. It keeps my head warm. The shade here is not too far out, so it won't not hit the scope. And it's easy to take on and take off. Uh, in Denmark, in Scandinavia, and some European countries, it is actually polite to take off your hat uh, when you are uh, getting addressed by the host of the hut. Or at the end, when you are actually uh, honoring the animals on what we call the parade, you take off your hat. So this is easy, just fold it up, put it in your pocket. Another thing uh, on the drone hunts is the hunts I go on here in Denmark. It is actually custom that you take care of the animal yourself. If you shoot, uh, red deer, you take care of the intestines. So the animal is ready for preparation uh, to transport uh, to the parade. So if you are going on a drone hunt where you're supposed to do that, uh, bring a knife. I always carry two, uh, for that simple matter. I could lose, lose one. This is probably my favorite hunting knife. This is small, lies good in the hand, and for skinning, uh, whatever, it's just great. Uh, I like the classics, of course, bone handle. In my pocket, I always carry this. A small pocket knife with two blades on it. This is a standard that locks good for if you are unfortunate actually you shot an animal and didn't kill it. You can use this for ending his life, uh, taking it down fast. Um, don't do it on a wild boar, only on deer and never on a stack because a uh, wounded stack with antlers, uh, that is dangerous. Use your rifle, take an extra shot, take two if you have to. And the suffering of the animal because our responsibility as a hunter is actually to make sure that the animals we hunt don't suffer so take them out uh, make sure to end the suffering fast and a single well-placed shot in the chest or in the back will end the suffering immediately uh, and you will have peace in mind on smaller deer like roe deer this one in the back of the head uh, into the brain and you end the suffering immediately. This one I use to actually cut up the animal because there's this little dull tip on it so you will not damage the intestines. Um, I hunt to get meat in the freezer and intestines and meat do not work well together. I tried. It tastes like, yeah, you can guess. It. Another thing I always bring on a driven hunt is this little rangefinder. This is from the company uh, Leupold, uh, and this is a uh, Marksman 1000. Uh, you can buy a range for finder for several hundred euros. This one is in the cheaper end. I think it's roughly 200 euros, something like that. Uh, don't quote me on the price because I had this for, what, eight years now? Something like that. It makes a distance up to a thousand meters. Um, you don't need it. But when I go on a driven hunt, or for that matter, even on a, a hunt for the roebuck in the summer, when I'm standing still or placed in a tower uh, or a high seat, I simply find some points in my shooting area and measure the distance. So I know, well, I have an idea of what distance I'm shooting at. Uh, and that gives me confidence to know that within that striker, within that perimeter, I am capable of placing the shot uh, where it hopefully ends the life of the animal fast. Um, we have to bear in mind that when we are on a driven hunt with a rifle, most of the time the animals come in movement. Uh, they can just come slowly, like in a trot, or they can come like shot out of a cannon. So the blood is pumping, they are a bit stressed, so you can actually, even with a well, sorry, well-placed bullet in the heart and lung region, you can easily see a red hind or even a red calf walk the distance of 60, 70 meters, uh, roughly 50 yards, even though it's actually dead. 
simply because of the adrenaline rush in the animal on the hunt. Wild boars, uh, we have all seen the movies where they get a shot and they tumble, but actually sometimes they get back up. Uh, not because they're not dead, they are actually just not aware of it. They, that they are not aware that they are dead yet. So find your shooting distance and always keep in mind, this is live animals. This is a living being. Don't take any chances. Uh, I've too many times seen hunters taking chances on a distance where they shouldn't have taken the shot. Um, wounding an animal is never a good thing. And we have the obligation, as I said before, to end the animal's life fast and quickly. We can all misplace a shot. That will happen to all of us. But never, ever, ever go past or beyond your shooting, your shooting abilities. Wounding a red stack in the gut, that animal can easily go three, four, five, six kilometers. And it will have a miserable death death because it will actually just be killed by fever and bacteria and that's a shame uh, most bourbon hunts i go to there are dogs train tracker dogs so can actually can follow the the trail of the animal if you are unlucky to wound an animal that doesn't drop on the spot and a lot of hunts you are actually not permitted to shoot again in the area where you didn't deliver the animal so if the animal goes away from it and you don't see it drop down and die. You are not allowed to shoot in that area. But again, there are variations from country to country. There are, so, so you have to keep in mind where you're going on a driven hunt. Another thing I bring sometimes, depending on where I'm on a driven hunt, is actually a good scope or actually binocular. Uh, this one, uh, I recently got this. Uh, I treated myself into a new scope. This is a Miopta. It's called uh, Mio Pro Air, uh, 10 times 42. This is mid-range binocular. Uh, but to believe me, I tested it. Uh, and I was blown away by the clarity of the lenses in it. This is easy to hang around your neck, and carry under the jacket. And sometimes you need a scope, sometimes you don't. But this doesn't take much space. Uh, some people like to just use the rifle with the scope on. Uh, to be honest, I'm not into that because, first of all, the area of sight is not that big. And second of all, pulling your rifle to your shoulder without the intensity of shooting it is, well, it's, it's not me to judge, but I don't do that. Another thing about the scopes on the rifle. Some people like to use these scope caps. I did that for many years, uh, but I realized that on a driven hunt where you have to react fast, you actually end up with, yeah, you might protect the lens from the rain, but when you flip it up, you actually get this kind of, Forky picture because there will be a lot of moisture on here. So I actually just place it, the rifle, in the tower where I actually can cover up the, the end of the scope when the rifle is standing like this. So I don't get any water on here if it's raining. When we are talking about driven hunts. You can more or less use your standard equipment. You don't have to go out and buy a straight pull Strasse or Blasse or Swarovski scope or the clothing series from Hercules called Wild Boar, I think it is, whatever. You can actually go on a driven hunt with what you have. The main thing is that you practice you practice and you practice. Shooting an animal that is standing still is the practice we use many times over the season or actually before the season on the shooting range. 
we have a target that is fixed, we fire, and we make groupings like this. But when you are shooting at a moving animal, well, even at roughly 20 miles per hour, that animal, if it's 90 yards away, if you aim for the shoulder blade like you usually do, that bullet would actually more or less hit in the gut. And that will not kill the animal. So find a place where you have moving targets. Practice at home what we call dry practice. Practice to actually take the rifle to your shoulder, pull the trigger, keep the rifle up, and remove the bullet. Because you need to be able to fire fast. I have seen hunters on driven hunts thinking, God, they must be using a semi-automatic because they were shooting like that. And they delivered 95% of the game. And once in a while they missed. We all do that. So keep that in mind. Never ever be ashamed to be a hunter. Be ashamed if you pull the trigger on something beyond your skills, your capacity as a hunter. For me, when I go on a driven hunt uh, here in Denmark where I live, I start the, actually the evening before. I actually find everything I need, go through it section by section, my clothing, uh, my ammunition, my utilities like my knife, uh, my bullets, uh, my hat, my scope, my binocular, uh, my security, my safety vest, uh, whatever I actually need, I bring it. And sometimes you are invited to a driven hunt and the host says, yeah, the drives are two hours. And that is great. Uh, you will see a lot of nature in two hours, but it can also be pretty cold. So I always, evaluate and say okay can i keep it going in two one two three drives before we have lunch or do i need to bring a thermos with some hot coffee hot cocoa some tea some hot soup do i need to bring a chocolate bar or whatever because when you're sitting out there and the adrenaline starts to run in your body and believe me it will as soon as you hear branches cracking or breaking, uh, the rattle of the leaves in the underground, uh, the sounds of the dog, if it's a drive with dogs, your heart will start. <laughs> so you need something because the more adrenaline that runs through your body, the, hung the hungrier you get. I always bring some chocolate. Uh, it doesn't matter which. Uh, sometimes I bring a sandwich just to have in my pocket. And depending on the hunt, I always bring a thermos with some hot coffee or some hot chocolate and I always bring some water it's a funny thing you always end up being thirsty when you're sitting out in nature waiting so water always a good thing and if you need to take care of the animal blood on your hands you can wash them off I think this is more or less driven hunts with a rifle what to do what to prepare for how to prepare for it and remember one thing Practice, practice, and practice until you trust your equipment 100%. I trust my rifles and I trust my abilities as a hunter. But even me, uh, after, I'm going to sound old, but more than 35 years as a hunter with a license and 10 years before that as a kid. Sometimes I have to stop myself from taking that shot because I have a feeling inside of me saying it won't be right. Trust that feeling when you have it. There will be another chance. And driven hunts are exciting. They are, well, they are actually a bit funny because you never know what comes out of it. Sometimes you, a few weeks ago, we shot, we were 22 hunters, 20 hunters I think it was, and there were red deer in all of the drives. We had two drives, big drives. Uh, they were roughly 100, oh, actually they were 150, 200 hectares each, um, roughly 45 minutes a drive. Um, and there were red deer in all of them, 
but they will only deliver two, two red deer uh, in Danish forest. Normally we are delivering between eight and 11 on these small drives, only two drives. But there were red deer all over the place, but there was so much sound traveling through the forest because there was no wind. It was a blue sky, it was just a beautiful autumn day, that actually the animals knew we were there before we even did. Uh, so that's hunting. And you can go on a driven hunt in Germany for wild boar, fallow deer, or in Poland. And you will probably see 50, 60, 70 animals passing your tower, passing the post you were given. Uh, so bring enough ammunition, but also trust in your abilities as a hunter. But most of all, don't take the shot if you're not sure. So until next time. I wish you all happy hunting and remember, share, like, leave a comment below and help me keep hunting passion moving. Thank you for watching and have a nice day. Bye.